You can see what Uncle Idris and everyone else is saying. How much mercy that we need to seek. So it says this, and Yahweh I said this, that you know, what we got to get started with. And this, we're going to use this to, to spring off to where we can go into what we are seeking. Boom. We're going to use this here, the, the springboard. And we'll find this over in Matthew chapter 9, and picking it up in verse 13. And it says this. It says, Go ye and learn what that meaneth. What what meaneth? Go learn what that meaneth. I have mercy. Yahweh Shai, or some people want to use Jesus, he's telling us we need to go and learn what mercy means. Including thy sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So we need to understand what those two things are. Because he said we need to go learn what that means. Mercy. So we don't know what vu means. And most, most of us don't. See, the biggest problem that we have is that where a lot of us like to feel we know this and we know that and we go and we see what's going on. But what he's saying right here, he's making himself clear. What mercy is, and then he's talking about right here, and not sacrifice. Because it's clear what we even went through just this past Sabbath. We found out exactly what sacrifice is. And it's an established covenant on what it's talking about. So do we know the meaning of the two? Now to get down to the nuts and bolts of that, we're gonna actually um, find out more direct what that is in the class in the back. Cause I'm gonna give out a couple other precepts for that to where you can find out exactly how those two merge together to where you can get a clear understanding on what's going on. Because one thing we got to remember, that we are all sinners saved by grace. We are all sinners saved by grace of God. So if we love one and hate the other, and we sit there and we talk these things with God, we got to remember a couple of things. If God sit there and God said he can take out one and leave the other, and first thing we want to say is that God is unrighteous. Same thing people say about, well, if God don't take them, and why why he can't take them, and what about us? Two, we trying to get in God's business. That's problem one. We trying to get in God's business, and we don't need to be in God's business. And I'm going to show you why this, this is the biggest problem. Because we need to adhere to the word and understand what he's saying. So I'm, I'm gonna show you something. I just wanna make sure that we clear as we move forward on this. I wanna make sure that we clear on this. We're gonna go to Romans chapter nine, picking it up at verse 14. And this is what we have to remember here for each and every one of us. It says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Because God can choose one and, and dump the other. He has full right to do what he want to do. But we have the problem to where we'll sit there and say, oh no, God should do this or God should do this. All of a sudden, we want to tell God what he need to do. I, I really want you to think about that. We, we do it all the time. We start telling God what, what he need to do. What shall you say then? Is there unrighteousness in God because he chose not what you chose? It says, God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. 
I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Meaning it's none of your business. It's none of my business. It's none of anybody's business but God. So we need to know what vu mean. This untranslatable word. All we can put there is mercies. Mercy is an untranslatable thing you can put your finger on. Boom. So let's look at this. Let's go here to boom and see what's going on here. It says, let thy mercies come also unto me, O Spirit of God, even thy salvation according to thy word. Boom. So we need this salvation according to his word. So with that, the only way you can get it, this is his unmerited to where his untouchable to where you can't. Only thing you can sit there and see to distinguish the power of God. So the only way you can get this, you need you need mercies for him to do that. So it's up to him. And he will have mercy on who he will have mercy. He will have compassion on whom he will have compassion. It's not it's not your prerogative on what he can do for you, or you can try to push your friend into it, or put a relative into it. No, it's not a, it's not that kind of game that he's playing. So we got to see what this power that he can give you, because it's telling you right there, even the Lord to thy salvation. See, we want the mercies, but we also want his salvation. The salvation is the receiving on what you see right here in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, verse 8. It says, but ye shall receive power. This is that mercy and that grace that he's giving you. You should receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. But you have to have boo to even receive that. You have to have boo to even receive that. So how did this work out? In verse 42, it makes it a little bit more understandable. It says, so shall I have wherewith to answer him that reproaches me. For I trust in thy word. He's making himself more and more clear as he goes through, more and more clear. And what he's actually making sure that we understand is this. It says, so when we have the power, that's all he's saying. When we have the power, when we have the Holy Ghost that's come upon us, we can answer him that reapproaches, that caused us to blaspheme, that caused us to disgrace and caused us to commit abominations against God. That's what that did. Because the Holy Ghost is actually going to sit there and it's going to do what? It's going to condemn everything according to the flesh. Because you're going to trust in the word. We need to answer for these reapproaches with the help of Christ. We need the, the help of Jehovah. We need this help so we can go forth. Let's, let's, let's grab a little bit more. Let's, let's see something here. See if we can start wrapping some of this and start getting it around our head a little bit better. In Hebrews chapter 13, picking up at verse 13, it says this and a little bit more. It says, let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp. It's telling you exactly what's going on. Now you have a lot of people sit there and they're trying to, oh, got camp, got camp. Just because the name there is telling you without the camp. You ain't going in there with a group of people. You're not going in there with, with a gang. You're not going in, you're going without the camp. Bearing his by himself, his reapproach. See, because you're sanctified by the body of Christ. To come into God without the camp. Bearing his reapproach and not putting them on somebody else. This is so clear. But the problem is we 
just always trying to find a quick way out. And we have to really just stop doing that. We have to stop looking at other ways to where we can look at this person and down that one and thinking that we can receive vu by talking down about somebody. <laughs>